How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week seven, and we're coming off of a pretty difficult loss against Akron. One that we should not have lost, but I played poorly, so uh, we're going to try to bounce right back. We've got Bowling Green this week, and we've got some recruiting to do. We already have two commits, and we're looking like we could potentially land a few other guys. If we go and look at top schools, we can see that we're looking very solid with a lot of these guys. Unfortunately, with Rashad Ross, uh, nobody is actively recruiting him except for us, but our bonus points are just so weak uh, that it's not going to be worth the time to give him 500 points per week because uh, we'll still be losing to 60 Ohio State no matter what. But there's guys like Avery Rawls, who we can steal away from Coastal. Troy Carter, who we can steal away from Texas A&M and Ole Miss. Uh, and guys like Carl Newby that we can steal away from Minnesota. So that's all good news. Central Michigan, our rivals have picked up one of the guys on our board. And there might be a few other players that we just need to take off. And we could fight for Tony Wilson, but there's a bunch of visits there. Jesse Garrett is a no-go. So we'll just kind of get rid of guys that we don't really have any chance to pick up. We also have four players ready for visits, so we're going to schedule those. We've been sending them to the Central Michigan game, and now that we're getting complimentary visit, we're getting 75 XP about per visit. So it's going to be really, really good for us. Um, just so much XP uh, visit versus arrival. The only thing that would be better is if Central Michigan was ranked in the top 25, but as it stands, that's a lot of free XP. We just got a few hundred there. And that is certainly going to help us out uh, in picking those players up. Top 25 polls. We'll see if there's any crazy matchups this week. Georgia and Coastal will play. Coastal, with a loss, uh, is looking to try to fight back a win against the number one undefeated Bulldogs. Could do that. Georgia's looking very strong. Penn State will also have to fight to stay undefeated as they play at number 15, Nebraska. And so will Texas as they play at number 9, Oklahoma. So just big games all over the place throughout this top 25 this week, plus the chance for some upsets. It was pointed out Ball State is receiving votes right now, only four, but they are receiving votes and we will have to play them this season. So that could be our most difficult game on the schedule as we'll take a look at our Heisman watch. Uh, well, David West, the quarterback for Coastal is still there. Nothing else really has changed. So for about the sixth time this season, we are not favored to win a game. We have won three of those games, though, uh, and we are the higher overall team in this matchup. Boy Green lower than a 77 overall. The only two spots where they have us are three spots, points per game, their rush offense, and the turnover differential. I really killed us in turnover differential with the interceptions thrown last game, so we just have to make sure that we are holding on to the football. They are only 74 overall with a 77 offense and a 73 defense. You got to think that gives us good chances to get in there and, you know, take a win on the road here. The Falcons, I think we're just going to have them in that all orange, and we'll see what we can do as we look to win another game in the MAC. So again, offensively, very mediocre. They're better than us running the ball by 20 yards, uh, but neither of us are really good at that nationally. And defensively, we still are... a top 10 defense at the moment we haven't played the best teams and i'm sure if we were playing against top 25 teams consistently that would be you know way worse rankings wise but they don't give up a lot of points so as long as we're getting into the end zone i think that we'll do okay their quarterback is their best player followed by a strong safety and a left end uh, all of that mid to low 80s so they have a decent amount of depth but again 74 overall team there's a good chance that we could take this so here we are at Dwight L. Perry Stadium in Bowling Green, Ohio. Side of today's matchup. We'll go with tails on the coin toss. And for the first time in a while, we will win that. So we're going to elect to kick off and see what our defense can do first today. They did so well up until last game where Akron kind of exposed him. So we will hope for the best as Bowling Green gets it off with a dropped pass on their first play, a pass thrown away on their second, and a sack on third down. So we're going to get great field position near midfield and right off the bat we got to give it to jesse wagner obviously give it to what i would consider our best player sure sure as mitchell exists but jesse wagner is having one hell of a season the toss doesn't work but it's probably play call more than his abilities let's get a little crazy here second and 13 flea flicker can we throw it up Serge mitchell the one-on-one -on -one 50 50 ball he can't come down with it maybe a little bit lucky that that one doesn't get picked off 
And the trickeration may be coming back to bite me here as it is third and long. We'll go five wide, stepping back, looking. Gonna throw this one to Nixon, and that one's picked off. Great, great catch by the DB. Decent return. I thought that Nixon was gonna get better separation than that. So my bad play gives them good field position. We start the game 0-2 through the air. Two very interceptable balls. Uh, thankfully, Bowling Green's not too good. Second and five. Second and 15, really, after a penalty. Third and 16. And they get the pass, but it's not enough. So we will hold them. Uh, and we get the punt back for a touchback. It's probably a foolish mistake, but I'm going to keep passing the ball. Uh, just got to get something. There we go. Broussard with the catch and the stiff arm cheese. We get 24 yards. We move downfield with a big play. And now I can feel a little bit more confident in our offense here. Trying to get back to midfield. We'll give it to Wagner up the middle. Broke a tackle and then got hit, but a good five-yard carry on the counter. We're going to risk it here. Ed, last game, was kind of selling on these read options. He's going to hold on to it. He's going to keep it. If this was Grayson McCall or Raid on Randell or something, they would have scored the touchdown there. But instead, we get a good first down. And if we can show a team that our quarterback is a little bit of a threat with his legs, they'll have to respect that a lot more. Run from Wagner up the middle goes for nothing. And Jesse now three carries for two yards. Definitely his low of the season at this point. Simmons is in. Second and ten will go with another counter. Following the blockers, there's nothing going on there. And it's going to be third and long. This might be four down territory, but I would like to make it a more manageable fourth down attempt if we can. Looking for Serge Mitchell on the curl. I'm throwing it. He's not going to hold on to it through the contact. That ball was just way too high. So an inaccurate pass from Ed means that we're going to punt it away. They take the touch back, and now it's time for Bowling Green maybe to be the first team on the board. Two big plays. They are easily across midfield. 21-yard pass. There's a little bit of a rush, and now a third and seven. And it must have been a turnover. The defense has seemingly gotten a stop, which is great news, and we can hand it off and... Just try to continue to run the ball. Neither team able to get in as we're nearing the end of this first quarter. We've kind of been actually playing to our true overall the past few games. We started the season maybe overperforming, and now we're looking okay as Wilson steps out of bounds. Zach's got to stay in there. It's third and inches now. We're going to go with the handoff, but we're 0-2 so far in the day, and Wagner has not had a good, a good day running the ball, but that one he breaks free and sneaks across midfield. For a 17-yard pickup, just found the gap. A little bit more speed, he would have been completely gone. Good tackle there from Bully Green to save that. I like that a lot. I kind of like this. We'll see. They're bringing the safety up on our side that we're running the option to. Simmons is our pitch man on this one. And we won't have to pitch it to him for a while. He pitches it late. He's getting the stiff arm cheese. And Jerome's getting 11 yards and a first down. That was a surprisingly successful option. As Wagner will come back in, and we're going to continue the running attack. It's a little bit more safe and surefire than our passing right now. Ooh, end of the first quarter. We're going to be all tied up. Zeros for each side. We have a turnover. I think that they have a turnover. Uh, we are moving the ball nearing field goal range if we're not already in it. So we just got to hold on to possession. Make sure that we score. We ran the ball a ton to end the first quarter. We're going to throw up a pass here on first down. It looks like they want to bring pressure. I'm actually going to send Mitchell deep. We'll see if we can catch him out. And I don't like it. I hit the wrong button. Right bumper was wide open. Instead, it's a pass into the end zone. And it's going to be intercepted for a touchback. Right bumper, I think it was our running back or maybe the tight end or something, was absolutely wide open. So I panic and throw it to the wrong receiver. And we're not going to score points on that drive. Bowling Green running the ball where well. Throws in a good pass, a five-yard rush. Third and one here across midfield. They don't convert it. It's fourth and one. And we're going to get the stop. And oh my goodness, they punted us down. Coffin corner at the two-yard line. So a chance for us to get hit with a safety. Thankfully, Jesse says no to that. Gets six yards and gets us out of danger. This game is just destined not to go well. I think part of the problem is that I just expect my athletes to be so much better than they really are. It really hurts. Uh, Serge Mitchell gets tackled funnily. 
Good first down, good 18-yard pickup, but the way he got tackled, I gotta watch this one again. He just kind of flopped. Could it be that the first team into the end zone is going to win this game? Already a few minutes gone in the second quarter. Try the counter to Wagner. He's got a couple of blocks in front of him. The spin move works to allow him to keep moving forward. That's eight yards. He's up to 44 on the day now. And Wagner was actually shaken up a little bit on the play, so it's going to be Simmons checking in for him. And, man, if he can truck guys like that the whole game, he'll do just fine. It's just a bruise elbow for Jesse, so that's good news. We'll get him back in a bit. Not going to rush that. Don't need to aggravate a minor injury when we are working so well. Simmons, I didn't mean to spin there. Should have just trucked. Still got four yards out of the play, though. Jerome averaging about six yards per carry is nice as we will step back to throw. Give it to Wagner, and he's going to come back in with that bruised double and get five yards on the check down. Just going to use the play action as often as we can on these ones. And on third and one, we're going for it again. Faking the handoff. Check down was open. We can't get the pass off in time. So it's fourth and one. And we're going to use Smith, and we're going to go for this. Actually, this is so dangerous. We're going to throw it up. Somebody has got to be free early, right? Hoping for the best. They're bringing pressure. Throwing it away. Wagner needs to get this stiff arm. She's and he doesn't. Oh, my goodness. So we're getting exposed for our coaching. Is the only reason that we won two national championships because of the athletes that we had. I'm not sure. Defense is still doing well. But when I don't have the star players to work with, it doesn't seem like it's going well. Throwing Broussard and Mitchell deep. We'll see where the safety goes. He's just going to rush. Trying to heave it up. It's a fumble. And Bowling Green's going to recover inside the five. Our third turnover of the first half. When I think we had Mitchell easily downfield. Well, let's see if the defense can keep these guys out of the end zone. Minute and 44 before the half. And they have plenty of time to work with. Over the middle. Easily caught. One play touchdown there. Very disappointing. And while this is not going according to plan at this point, stepping back again to throw. Almost threw another pick. Broussard with the one-handed grab. All right, minute and 25. We got to just keep throwing the ball here. We don't have time to run. We do have all our timeouts, but something bad's going to happen either way. Wilson, wide open. Can't hold on to it. Are you kidding me? It's second and 10. As far as I'm concerned, that was a damn near perfect pass from Ed Bird, but when your guys can't hold on to the ball, there's not a whole lot more that you can do. Looking to throw this one. Again, looking for Wilson, and he's not going to come down with that. Threw that one maybe just a bit too late. Just absolutely struggling today, trying to throw the football. Somebody has got to be open. Somebody's got to hold on to the ball on one of these, and there it could be over the middle. Bennett, good job for him to come down with that but we got to go in the hurry up just over a minute to play in this half we have to get back on the board we do get the ball to start the third quarter so that's nice as we'll go back to Bennett he's not going to get the first down we'll take our first time out there that catch gives us a second and one to work with and I'm actually going to run it here give it to Jesse because we're in a good spot to pick up the first down and that's what he's going to be able to do so now we can go back in the hurry up with the clock stopped as they move the chains Again, we will step back looking to throw. No coverage over the middle. A should be wide open. Wilson holds on to that one. And it's a first and goal now with 49 seconds. And this is where I'm going to be a little bit worried because we haven't been able to hold on to the ball long this entire game. We're going to go with the slip screen. Wagner has some blocks. Not enough to get into the end zone, though. He gets four yards and the clock is moving. And as we run down to 30 seconds, I'm going to go read option on second and goal. Have Ed Bird take it. And Ed Bird fighting for the end zone gets in through the contact. And we're just going to tie this one up with 27 seconds left in the first half. And we'll see with 20 seconds left now if Bowling Green can or will do anything. It looks like they're burning the clock and they'll be content to go into the locker room here at the half. With the clock just running down. And there it is. They don't even bother running another play. Clock hits triple zeros, and we head into the locker room. All tied up, seven apiece. Uh, which, honestly, we can't be too upset about. We've had three turnovers, including one that set them up on the two or three yard line for an easy touchdown. So our defense continues to play well. It's just me on offense struggling mightily to keep a hold of the football and to move it in general. So we just don't throw any more picks this game. Uh, maybe the run the ball a little bit more. 
we should be just fine. So let's get into this third quarter. We took the touchback on the kickoff. And now we will just run it, give it to Wagner out towards the edge. He's going to get a couple of blocks. He breaks a tackle, and it's just a yard gained. The Falcons came down and got us pretty good there. Second and nine. I don't think they get us this time. Eagles will soar. Wagner with the juke. Oh, if he makes the DB there, miss. It's a big one. Instead, it's third and five. Only two third down conversions on the day so far, so this is not guaranteed, but that's a nice safe one. We give it to Serge Mitchell, and he's gonna couple, going to get a couple extra yards after the catch. Somehow that turned into a 15-yard gain, and it moves us to the 45 as we give it to Jerome up the middle, and Simmons not really going to get anything. He actually got pushed back and then somehow fought forward for a yard. I can't be upset with that. Definitely a good fight from him there. We go with the play action on this one, and on the boot looking, A could be open. Wilson holds on to that one and gets us the 15-yard catch. A lot of play actions in this game. It's been working relatively well so far, and this is going to be a big run for Wagner. No doubt about it when you see that early blocking, and he gets nine yards. Never thought that coming to Eastern Michigan we'd be a running powerhouse in the Mac, but it seems to be the case as Jerome's going to get the first down on the ground. Really not sure why, but I've been spamming the spin button today and it's not working all that well. Let's give it to Wagner and cut it across the middle. He's gonna truck a guy. and <laughs> That's a first and 10 down to the 11. 13 carries for 81 yards now for Jesse as Jerome has 25 of his own. And on the read option, Jerome's going to get the chance to get into the end zone or at least get us closer. And he gets six yards across the five. All right, if I screw this up, this one's entirely on me. We're going with the pass from the five. I know the running has been working, but when we have the check down to Smith, it's going to work. The way the camera moved there, I thought he fumbled it, but he got four yards and a first and goal. That scared the crap out of me for a bit there. All right, let's give it to Simmons. Let him just pound it up and get to the outside. I kind of thought we were just going to try up the middle, but the outside was all too easy, and there's the touchdown. We absolutely needed that big opening drive to start the second half. We're going to take our first lead of the game, and we'll see now what Bowling Green can do. The Falcons take a touchback. Decent run and a big pass on second down. Another decent first down run. Another big pass. They're increasing those numbers. They're across midfield. And continuing a fumble recovered by us. So the defense gets the stop. Seems like every time Bowling Green starts to move on offense, we shut them down with a turnover. So we're only losing by one in the turnover battle at this point on the game, which is fantastic as Wagner really cuts it back inside. There's another nine. Let's just give it to him again. He's closing in on 100 on the day. A big play, and it ha he would have it. That time, we just ran into the defender. That should have been five yards plus. I see no reason not to just keep running. We're going to give it to him on the counter. He's got not enough blocking, but he breaks the tackle, and he's going to fight. Oh, not enough space. Too many orange jerseys in the area. It's fourth and three, and we're going for it. Got to try and pick this one up. Hopefully something's available. They're not really bringing a lot of pressure over the middle. Nixon holds on through the contact. And we'll just barely convert on fourth down. This felt like too big of a drive to let it stall out. We have the momentum after the turnover and a chance to increase the lead. So we got to go for it. Ed Bird hoping for the pitch man, but it doesn't appear. He just falls down and gets his four yards. And we'll go to the air looking for Mitchell on this one. They're not going to bring too much pressure, but he's got the one-on-one. -on -one great separation on the route, and he gets out of bounds for the, the first down there. And that play is going to take us to the end of the third quarter. So as the clock expires here on the third, we'll head into the fourth with a touchdown lead almost inside the red zone, threatening to make it 14. Jesse Wagner really trying to carry us once again. Should we score on this drive, it's going to be clock burning for the rest of the fourth quarter for us. Jerome will come in on the first down of the fourth quarter. He's going to get a decent little three-yard pickup. And this is incredibly foolish of me, uh, but I'm having Simmons throw a pass here. It's not going to work because he's going to get sacked. <laughs> 
dang it. Well, I'll tell you what, it would have been really cool if that worked. Unfortunately, we're going to have to step back looking to throw. Throwing a tough one. Nixon can't hold on to it through the contact again. It's fourth and 13. And we must not be in field goal range because coach wants us to go for this one. I don't know if I like that at all, but we're going to hope for the best. No deep safeties. Uh, we'll see. Can Nixon or Broussard, or, or sorry, can Mitchell or Broussard beat their man? I'm throwing it up for Surge. Back corner of the end zone. Incomplete. It's a turnover on downs. Threw that one a little bit late, so we couldn't lob it in there. Defender does a good job getting his hands on it, and we'll see what we can do. Second in a while, third in a long ways. Nine yards for them to pick it up. They don't do it, so we're going to get the ball back. And the good news with our defense playing against uh, these MAC teams is that we can have drives like that. Oh my gosh, Wagner fumbles the ball. A big hit, and it's a huge turnover. Well, I was going to say our defense allows us to do bad on offense, but my goodness, Jesse just got obliterated. He might have been down, though. They could overturn this. Waiting to see if the refs call a view, and it's not going to happen, so it must have been clean. They go with the option. It gets them nothing. Bowling Green's in the hurry up, which means I guess that we're not watching this from the sim view, but we're going to watch it from the press box. Decent little handoff there on second down. Gives them a third and four to work with. And again, from the hurry up, third down, four to go. They step back to pass. Quarterback's going to release it. It's short of the line to gain, but the man has the space and breaks a tackle for that first and goal. Big catch by Jeremy Gibson. It sets this team up with a chance to tie, throwing it for the corner of the end zone. It's intercepted. The Eagles have the ball. It's a great return down the sideline, and we're going to get good field position there. This is a huge turnover game, seven total. As Lorenzo Henry got to that one. That's exactly what I was trying to talk about when we just fumbled the ball in our last possession. That our defense is so good, they bail us out of situations, and they do it again there. Wagner gets two yards. Uh, with three minutes to go, we're going to burn the clock. I don't really see Bowling Green being able to score twice. So at the very least, we should be able to guarantee ourselves overtime as Wagner keeps the ball alive. Keeps the clock moving, but sets us up with a third and eight. Well, can we convert this Bowling Green not taking a timeout there? We're going to throw the short one to Bennett. He's got the blocking, and he's going to pick up a big chunk of yards as Bowling Green will finally take their first timeout down at two minutes. Whip route works it damn near to perfection as we'll hand this one off to Wagner. And he's got space. Uh, first down might be enough here as Bowling Green is forced to take their second timeout. Zero reason that this game should have ever been as close as it has been. But we're stuck with the card that we've been dealt. And Bird can't get the first down. I didn't want him to take a hit and fumble it, but it's third and inches. So we'll see if Wagner can get across just enough. He needs inches. Will we get it? It looks easy, and he does. That's going to be the game, as we'll just be able to burn the clock out now. A huge first down. Jesse's got 99 yards. Let's give it to him one more time. And that'll put him over 100 on the day on 22 carries. Maybe we can jump him up a ton. Maybe he can break through. Second and seven. Got to keep it forward. And he does the spin move. That time works. He gets 10 more yards. Trying to make the day look that much more impressive. So with another first down, we've guaranteed ourselves the victory. We can come out in the victory formation. And kneel it down. And that will be enough for us to let this clock hit that triple zeros and we can get out of here. Uh, we can leave Bowling Green with a win. 14-7, an ugly game. A lot of turnovers. Seven total. We had four. A couple of fumbles, a couple of picks. They had three of their own. So just sloppy football all around, but we're able to come out on top. We bounce back from the bad loss against Akron. Uh, we finally beat a team from Ohio. Eric Lane, two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery. That is absolutely massive. He gets our player of the game honor is we got to work on some stuff on offense because if we come up against a team like Ball State playing like this, we are not going to get the win. Oh, in the top left, Coastal loses their second game of the season. 24-21 to 21 against Georgia. They couldn't quite make the comeback. 11 points scored there in that fourth quarter, but they needed the 14 to send it to overtime. So unfortunate for them. For us, 
It was a win, but I don't think we deserved it. We played terrible. Six minutes time of possession for uh, Bowling Green, but they forced four turnovers. And honestly, I mean, they didn't get a whole lot of yards, but they were a touchdown shy. If they don't throw that interception near the end of the game, it would have been all tied up late in the fourth quarter. They would have had a chance. Uh, we held them to 58 rushing yards and 106 passing while we put up 155 and 181, but this doesn't feel like it was a good game for us. Jerome Simmons uh, is our offensive player of the game, which is kind of foolish because he rushed 10 times for 31 yards, but he did score one of the few touchdowns. Uh, and Eric Lane, again, six tackles, but two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery on the game. Certainly solid enough. Well, we moved to four and two. Nice winning record, and we will go on the road next week to play one of our rivals in Western Michigan. And our bad win was rewarded with a pretty bad recruit. Carl Taylor, the 65 overall center, has committed in a recruiting battle with a lot of guys, including two good kickers. Uh, I don't know how impressive that would be. We get a decent amount of XP, but the real question is, will we be favored to win in this directional Michigan rivalry game? And for the first time, we are, and deservedly so. They're a bad team just a C overall, so we have the advantage everywhere but defense. Uh, they have turnover differential and rush offense on us, but I'm not too worried about that. One thing that's crazy, 14 visiting prospects at this game. Western Michigan putting everything on the line here. So we need to win so that we can uh, hurt those recruits and uh, maybe give ourselves a better chance to land some of those prospects. We know the top 25 is going to have a decent shakeup. Coastal drops three spots from 10 to 13th after a three-point loss against the number one team in the country. Michigan jumps up from 8th to 2nd after they beat Rutgers. What the heck happened that that's going to be the case? Penn State lost. We see that. Uh, but USC won. Oklahoma beat number 10 Texas and jumped up from 9th to 5th. Penn State loss dropping from second. We had a loss from the number six team in Texas, number seven team in LSU, the number 10 team, the number three team, Wisconsin lost to Washington State by a touchdown. The number four team, Notre Dame, lost to Boston College. Oh my goodness, that is a lot. And number 17, Auburn lost, as well as Clemson and UCLA as they drop out. And Ball State's no longer earning any votes, so... They might have taken a loss there, but still probably the best team uh, that we would have to go up against in this season in general. So teams ranked 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 10 all lost in that uh, top 10 this last week, which is kind of crazy. Coastal's quarterback has fallen off the board as USC's running back has jumped up into that second spot. Did it was a good game. 21 carries for 168 yards and three touchdowns it is pretty impressive, even if it is against a team like Colorado. So at the end of the day, we managed to squeak out a win. And when we get to the end of the season, that's all that matters is that we got the win. We're four and two at the moment, and we're heading into our first big rivalry game of the season. Unfortunately, that's gonna have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos are posted as well. After that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also a link to my Twitter, which if you follow me there, when we hit 200 followers on Twitter, we're going to be doing a giveaway of an exclusive Goonmaster t-shirt. So once you've done that, then you can go to the last link, which is a link to our community Discord. All that being said, though, thank you guys again for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.